Excellent. Um, I'm delighted to be joined uh, by uh, Jack Moyes. And um, I met Jack in Belfast at the Healing Through Photography conference. And I found your presentation, Jack, fascinating. And that's why I've asked you to come and do a wee, a wee chat today. Um, so I guess you might as well start by, do you want to just tell me a wee bit about your journey into using photographs? Yeah, definitely. So um, my name, as uh, Neil's kindly, kindly alluded to, is Jack Moyes, and I am a photographer and artist from Swansea in South Wales. Um, I've been making images for about 10 years. I was first bought a camera when I was like, gosh, 17, um, while recovering from an operation, uh, and then proceeded to basically just start taking photos uh, as much as possible. I think my early interests were kind of relating to uh, surf photography because there's a real sort of culture of surfing in Gao where I'm from. Um, and that was the thing that I was missing in that sort of rehab stage was not being able to take, uh, get in the water as much. So um, still wanted to be a part of the scene. So started, yeah, taking sort of surf photography um, and then kind of carried that through to university as well. I actually studied design uh, as my undergraduate, uh, but spent most of my time bunking off and going down beaches, which... Uh, Probably wasn't the best idea in the world, but it was great because, um, yeah, we were. I, I was down in Plymouth, so we had sort of Cornwall on a doorstep, which was beautiful. Um, and then decided that my actual interests lay in photography rather than in sort of design. So transitioned and did a master's in photography. Mm -hmm. um, and I think like my photography has always been, especially when I started studying the masters, it's sort of shifted from sort of a sports and sort of landscape based. Um, practice to more sort of looking at societal issues so my master's project was looking at sort of um the demonization that I felt was being perpetrated by tabloid media at the time through their choice of like headlines and stuff like that um and then I graduated and didn't really know what to do um I was working sort of in a graphic design job which is a bit of a dead-end job um and so my mental health was declining for a number of different reasons um, there have been two constants in my life for the past 10 years, the first being photography and the second being uh, the disability that I live with, which is called FSHD or vasoscapular humeral muscular dystrophy. Always managed to bottle that, so glad that I got that one right. <laughs> and basically what it means is that um, certain muscle groups in my body are breaking down far faster and earlier in my life than they should be. Mm -hmm. um, there's no sort of cure to the muscular dystrophy that I live with, so it's learning to sort of um, learning to deal with the sort of decline and learning to deal with those sort of issues um, and learning to sort of, yeah, try and sort of cope with the way that my body's changing, um, which at some points is sort of quite rapid, some point it's just quite stagnant. Um, but basically, I didn't really deal well with the diagnosis. I kind of went into a state of shock. I think 17 is at quite a young age to sort of try and get a grip of, you know, that sort of shocking revelation that, you know, the rest of your life is going to be impacted by this sort of um, unknown and uncontrollable thing. So every conversation I had or every conversation I wanted to have, I like shut down, um, mm -hmm. refused to really discuss any of the issues that I had and the feelings that I had, the que the many questions that I had that related to my disability for, gosh, probably for like the next seven years. I'm the world's like worst patient. Um, and then, yeah, mental health um, was sort of a real issue for me um, and still is to a certain degree. Um, I live with sort of periods of anxiety or periods of depression, um, but particularly at that time, because I had all of these questions and feelings that I just wasn't discussing, um, my mental health like quickly declined and it was actually declining faster than my physical health, which is to me is kind of ironic now. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so I started to sort of try and use photography as a tool to understand some of the things that were happening to me because I didn't feel like I was able to talk about the things that were happening to my body or like were happening to me mentally. So um started to try and use photography as sort of um a tool to sort of understand and make sense of some of the things that were um pressing issues to me at the time. And I started that project, gosh, three and a half maybe years ago now. Um, mm -hmm. So it's been a an interesting period of time where I've just been shooting this quite sort of long winded documentary project yeah um, I'm trying to just understand what's happening to myself basically
And was it a technique that you'd heard of before or was it something you, you just sort of fell into and thought, oh, you know what, we could maybe use this? I, a friend of mine who's a psychotherapist, I was really fortunate. Um, so one of the few people I did open up to about it, she was um, a psychotherapist and had studied psychology uh, and she could see how sort of difficult it was for me to sort of have these conversations. So, you know, she suggested maybe potentially using photography as a sort of a medium. I'd not really, I, I, I wasn't really aware because a lot of our studies when I was in doing my master's in particular, we were focusing on sort of documentary photography as being this like kind of cold calculated, um, you know, you, you don't have this sort of personal link to the project because that mm. sort of muddies the water, so to speak. Um, so th obviously I was aware of sort of people like Nan Golden who'd done quite personal projects. Um, but for me, I, I I didn't really have sort of any direct point of influence necessarily. Um, I, I kind of liked documentary projects that had sort of a more personal touch to them. So um, Jim Goldberg's Raised by Wolves um, and Redheaded Peckwood by Christian Patson and Sean Davies, which has formed the sort of basis of my sort of uh, willingness to sort of undergo this project. Um, Sean Davies looking for Alice was sort of a major turning point for me but there wasn't there wasn't much in the way of direct reference or sort of people telling me oh this is what you need to do you know it was more just a let's chant it and see how it goes sort of thing and I think when you're in that position when you don't really have much um and I'm, I'm hesitant to say hope but like that for me that's how it felt at the time I, there wasn't much sort of um hope or much sort of um feeling of sort of uh elation regarding the sort of conditions that I was living under I was just willing to try anything to sort of try and improve my mental health situation and mm -hmm. um yeah when someone tells me to do something I'm a bit of a sucker for just being like oh, I'll give that a shot like let's see what can happen <laughs> which is kind of a good thing and kind of not but yeah it, it worked out in the end I think yeah And, and I mean, how did you start the process? Were you doing self-portraiture anyway? Or did you just think, you know, I'll, I'll turn the camera on myself? And, and... Yeah, I think I, I'd always had an interest in self-portraiture. I'd, I'd never, one of the first reasons that I started picking up a camera was because I wasn't really that, um, I wasn't that keen to be in front of the camera myself. So I was like, oh, well, if I'm, I'm the photographer, then I don't have to have my photo taken, which yeah. is, I think a lot of photographers have a similar sort of feeling. <laughs> Very uh, much. And I've talked to loads of people that have said the exact same thing, but um, I, I think it was, gosh, maybe 2019, like early, late 2018, early 2019, when I decided that actually my, a lot of my issues stem from sort of um, a lack of, yeah, just self, self-awareness of self sort of, um, pride in self the way that I looked like I did you know I, I'd been told that I looked a certain way and I felt like that was perpetrated um sort of widely in society by other people um so I decided that I was like it might help to sort of sit in the camera on myself and try and take some images that for me allowed me to sort of understand how I looked first and foremost and like how my body performed um concentrating on the sort of elements that I thought you know um, my condition was affecting more fast, uh, more quickly than others. Um, and yeah, I don't, I, it was never sort of meant to necessarily be shared. At least that element of the project was like something for me that I was like, oh, this is, you know, it might help my um, feelings about self-worth, about sort of body image. Um, and yeah, it, it, I, I was at a stage where I was like, I just need to do something that will hopefully help. So it was it, turn the camera on yourself and hopefully find some sort of sense of um, peace to a certain degree with what mm -hmm. you find. Um, and I think working in sort of a dark room helped that as well. Like it was a very sort of slow, laborious process and you were always sort of, you know, being very wary of the sort of technical aspects of image making. Mm -hmm. I think that's that sort of benefited me um, and provided me sort of with an insight really, or like um, an in, at least I sort of liken it to a sort of a foot in the door moment where because I was looking at these images under red light, because I was sort of concentrating on the technical making of the image, it actually, 
you know the focus wasn't necessarily all on my body which I think was mm-hmm. quite interesting um so that provided me with quite a nice sort of end so to speak yeah and it's interesting you were saying it that they weren't necessarily taken to be shown or exhibited but I mean, yeah. ultimately I know you've gone on to exhibit some of them um because I think a lot of people feel that photography has become this this kind of showcase of the self it's like I need to photograph the best of me and put it out there on social media and get all these likes but actually yeah. there's a way to use photographs and it's it can be very yeah. personal yeah definitely definitely I think I, I definitely felt like that for years you know and you, you don't need to sort of put the best um, representation of your life online because that's what other people were doing and it was like this unspoken sort of comp- and it still exists to this day you know there's this unspoken sort of competition um mm-hmm. where everyone's trying to sort of perpetrate that they've got the best possible life um and for me those images didn't necessarily fit that sort of um that version of social media that a lot of people sort of um, relate to so uh, and especially because it was still quite sort of raw and still quite raw I didn't mm-hmm. really feel like I was comfortable sharing the images at that point um and again they were sort of quite intimate quite sort of vulnerable images as well so I didn't I don't I, I don't know at what point that sort of changed over to being like yeah let's share them for the whole world to see but um I'm grateful it did um and I think it, like working with other people and working with sort of other photographers, um, psychotherapists. Um, she really sort of instilled some confidence in me to be able to begin sharing some of these images. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. Like it, it, it's, it was a project that, yeah, I didn't think anyone would necessarily want to see either. You know, it's, it's, it's not something that is a comfortable disability. It's not a conversation that a lot of people want to have. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's still sort of a lot of um, taboo around disability and disabled people. Um, so I think that that was that was sort of playing on my conscience as well and playing on my mind just like do I want to sort of have this conversation which will then change the way that a lot of people will look at me and will consider me as me Um, Mm -hmm. and so that that was a sort of a conscious sort of yeah sort of a hesitancy almost to opening up and sort of sharing those images at first but I think the more that you do the better the conversations you have are you know Mm -hmm. There was an interesting um, point in your presentation, I remember, where you talked about, I think it was with Shine Davis that you had chatted with her and yeah. she told you to go deeper or, or she gave you some really good information or insight into yeah. doing self-portraits. <laughs> that was such a funny, was such a <clears> funny <throat> conversation that I had with her because I, I went into it and I had built up this sort of uh, bank of images um, over like a period of about a year and a half and they were mostly self-portraits, but I think I'd got quite sort of pleased with the sort of type of images that I'd made. Um, and I, I, I think not being in university, having graduated, I just wanted to show someone else. And I'd been a long time admirer of Sean Davies' work. Um, it was the first sort of accurate and honest portrayal of disability that I'd seen in a photographic project, which was mm-hmm. uh, compassionate and sort of had all this love associated with it. And it was not sort of hiding any of the sort of um, quote unquote ugly truths, if you will. Um, that you know people people when making these types of projects will often sort of filter them to a certain degree and hide aspects um, but Sean didn't and I was just amazed by that ability to you know take photos of a subject that's so difficult but do it in such a beautiful way so I reached out to her and I was like ah oh, like I'd love to have a conversation I've been a long time admirer of your work I think I named dropped a couple of people but because she also graduated from Plymouth so I was like oh, I'm just gonna name drop as much as I can to try and get this meeting um, and then eventually had the meeting and um, I forgot how sort of critical Sean can be at times. Um, and she was, uh, she didn't hold any, yeah, there was, it was a no holds barred conversation. Mm-hmm. And she, uh, I, I, I'm hesitant to say one for the jugular, but I think it felt like that in the moment. But she was, she was just very honest and very sort of to the point. Um, and it was what I needed, but she looked at the images and she liked the concept of the sort of, the way that the project was doing but she felt that there was sort of um still a sort of a reluctancy or a hesitancy on my behalf mm-hmm. to sort of properly properly sort of um integrate myself into that process and to um yeah just commit to that type of project which I think to make a good 
project and sort of the photographic world, you've got to have that commitment. Um, and that sort of, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go all in almost. Mm -hmm. um, so you just pointed that out mostly um, and sort of made me aware of the fact that even though, you know, I thought I was doing quite a lot of healing by taking these images, there were still so many elements to the sort of healing that I needed to do that I hadn't necessarily um, completed or necessarily sort of found the right way to have these conversations. So mm -hmm. it did prompt a bit of sort of a rejoke with regards to, you know, going back. And again, I, 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 I'm very fortunate that I work with a psychotherapist as well. So going back and sort of working with the psychotherapist and sort of trying to, yeah, just formulate another plan about how I could sort of have the conversations about things that um, weren't potentially relating to body image, but were potentially relating to more sort of the way that I viewed myself as a disabled person, the way that um, society had sort of ingrained in me this um, belief that sort of disabled people are sort of to be viewed as lessers and that um, disability is not sort of a thing that we should necessarily be proud of or be speaking of. Um, and so going back and sort of trying to readdress and sort of re uh, understand to a certain degree um, you know, why I felt like this, you know, what was um, underpinning some of these sort of rules that I'd set myself to live by, what was underpinning sort of some of the ways that I felt about myself and about other people that lived with disabilities. Yeah. In, in terms of I guess somebody looking to maybe do this for themselves in the future. Um, what is it about photography that lends itself so well to exploring the self? I mean, or or is it just a case of it's something that you're interested in, so it worked? Could it be done through music? Could it be done through, I, I don't know, other creative means? Or, or is there something about photography that really does lend itself to this kind of exploration? I think there's definitely, I, I think it's, um, there's, there's definitely projects that I've seen that, aren't photography that do sort of capture this um mm. essence of like self-exploration there was an album that i saw recently and i can't remember who the artist was um but the whole album had sort of voice snippets of the father who died very early in her life um and it this these sort of snippets ran through the whole album and i remember looking at that and being like wow that must have been such sort of a cathartic process of making that album mm -hmm. incredibly painful i'm sure and incredibly sort of um emotionally raw but equally that sort of sense of catharsis yeah. when you finish and I I think for me photography was the tool that I felt most comfortable using um and that I felt that I could express myself best in and especially with the sort of self-portraiture elements of the work there was that um you know that, that you can't you can't really do that in painting or you can't really do that as well in um in music making so for mm -hmm. me photography kind of just like that fit the bill perfectly and what I wanted to capture and like um I I've always been sort of a fan of the especially in film photography and and to a certain degree digital photography and the sort of indexicality that photography can offer that sort of you know it was photographed so it must have happened and it must have been like that Mm -hmm. um, and obviously that's not true because there's you know you can photoshop things and you can yeah. you, choose, you choose, you're always choosing what you know angle you're taking an image from but um to me that really helped me sort of at the start was that sort of belief in indexicality and belief in like uh I took this photo so it must have happened sort of thing mm -hmm. um that, I think that that was sort of a major in and then I I think the beauty of photography is you can take an image which um potentially can look one way but underneath can have all of this meaning and like all of these sort of hidden elements or hidden sort of uh, context to a certain degree um and that that was really empowering for me as well was to you know to be able to sort of use photography in that way and have conversations with people without them realizing that that's what I was doing to a certain degree mm -hmm. um and I, I find that really great as well but I I do think I, I do think that there's, you know, there's other creative avenues that people can use, but photography seems to be the sort of, A, most instantaneous with regards to digital photography these days, um, and B, it's a medium that a lot of people can sort of learn to use and like learn to sort of practice and get better at, um, and you can see that sort of, um, that sort of growth and that sort of um, development quite quickly. Yeah, uh, which you probably don't see and sort of, you know, if you picked up a guitar, it'd take you years to be able to compile something, I guess. But yeah. Um 
yeah. Just like for personal experience, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've tried it. <laughs> anyway, it gets wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. I, I mean, I think there's something, there's an element of, of um, objectifying something and, and making it external in that image as well. That, that, that you said quite cathartic, and I think that links into a lot of the feedback I've heard from groups I've run is the, the cathartic element of it. It's like, you know, I've been able to bring it out and, and yeah. make it exist, uh, but it's no longer in here or in, uh, you know, it's yeah. no longer unsaid, it's said through the image. And yeah, I think definitely. for a lot of people, it's just like oh, such a relief. Yeah, 100%. I completely agree. And like that, 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 that's that been, um, that, that you can't really, it's really difficult to summarize that, isn't it, to other people who mm. haven't sort of um, picked up a camera and used it in that way, I think. But yeah. Um, it's it, it was definitely that sort of sense of relief and the sense of sort of I don't know that lack of sort of tension and weight almost which I often have and for me like um, I find photography really useful because I can take an image and it's not like I move on from the sort of subject matter that the image is discussing but mm -hmm. it just allows me to understand the subject matter a bit more clearly and it allows me to sort of um, view it in a different light uh, to get not to get too metaphorical but like you can sort of you, you know you, you pin it on a wall and you look at it in a frame and you're like okay I can understand that a bit better I understand sort of what was behind those sort of feelings what was behind that sort of decision making and the the feelings don't necessarily dissipate like no. um I always say like I live with anxiety and depression because it's not something you necessarily um or at least in my case it's not something that I'll I'll heal from mm -hmm. and I won't be able to you know be cured of anxiety and depression but I've learned to live alongside them and I think photography is a really useful tool for allowing me to sort of understand that process a bit better. Yeah. yeah. A couple more questions and I just wondered uh, and on the flip side, I suppose, is there a sense that trying to visualize something and understand it gi gives you a sense of kind of more added pressure? Are you are you giving yourself an added burden to try and explore it through photography, or is that something? That... Um, yeah, um, I think so. I, I I think at least because when the project was like you know private to a certain degree mm -hmm. and I wasn't sharing it with people there was this sort of um there's no expectation so like for me it was just making images because you know there, that was that was providing me with a, a, a sense of relief um I think when you start to share images with people then there, there, there does become this sort of added weight of expectation to a certain degree um but when it was just me making images because I found them helpful and I found it useful I don't think I felt that weight of expectation it was more just the excitement of you know discovering something that was useful and discovering something that was potentially um providing me with sort of a sense of release um mm -hmm. but yeah the more the more I share it the more I feel that sort of weight of expectation almost and I think it's it's um it's the sort of difficulties of you know I I always say that I don't want my disability to, to define me mm -hmm. um but then equally, I'm making a project that's completely related to my disability. So I'm like, that oh, was a double-edged sword, which is quite interesting. But I, I do think that, yeah, I, I think if you're making images for the sake of making images and it's for you rather than any for anyone else, then that sort of weight of expectation for me at that stage didn't exist. Yeah, um, It was when I sort of started to try to appease, you know, funding boards or appease sort of other people, um, try and make images that sort of explored things that I potentially wasn't ready to have conversations about, that's when it got sort of slightly more difficult. But again, I think the process of making images has allowed me to sort of move quite nicely through that and navigate my way through those sort of conversations rather than it sort of being a burden as being sort of a, um, I was going to say guiding light, but that sounds so cheesy. Um, <laughs> it's it's a, yeah, it's it's been sort of a, um, a helpful process for yeah. sure. Yeah. And as we've been chatting, with your permission, I've, I've shown some of the images you've taken. And uh, yeah, I remember in, in Belfast, the, the, the one that I think struck me the most was the, the sequence of photographs that you had taken with you 
sit, uh, approaching a chair, sitting in the chair, standing up from the chair, and moving on. I thought that was very I, 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 powerful. Seems like a cheesy word to use as well, but it was captivating, and it it, it allowed an insight into somebody else's life um, through that visual means. And that was even without the the, the narrative behind it. I, I appreciate that using photographs, the narrative becomes much more rich when it's attached by the photographer to the photograph. But I wondered if you had a favorite image that you'd taken so far and which one you felt had kind of resonated mm. with you most. Kind of, I guess, kind of go to that studio in Punctum area where you've got that kind of oh, real emotional resonance with the photograph. Yeah. Um, it's a good question. I, 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 I've I, got a very strange relationship with a lot of my work where <laughs> after a certain, I can, I like it, but only after a certain amount of time, I think. Mm. Um, uh, and I think that's, you know, it's, it's good in what some ways, because it's always driving you to sort of try and create better images. Um, and equally, it's like, oh, I'd wish I could just sit back and enjoy sort of rest on the laurels to a certain degree. Um, I think I, I really quite like um, the image of the sinking ship. And uh, again, I'm sure you'll share this with the students. Um, and for me, that's sort of one of those that I shared in the early days of making this project. And I took it quite sort of um, soon after starting the project, where I was sort of trying to find some sort of semblance. Um, or essentially, no. So th this was taken in the first year, and I was just sort of taking the self-portraits. And the, the concentration was on the self-portraits rather than being on sort of this wider conversation with regards to the landscapes and how that might sort of represents in elements and it was only when I went back over the sort of images that I'd created in the years previously that I started to see this sort of current of um inquiry like running through the images that the type of sort of subject matter that I was taking and I think that is one that for me is something that holds a lot because it was quite clear that I was feeling a certain way about you know the subject matter that I was trying to talk about but equally didn't understand or know how to process it at the time so that that for me is one of my um one of the ones I don't like as little um <laughs> <laughs> I I do I like I the the ones that you're referring to with the um sort of sequence the sequential mm -hmm. shots um getting in and out of the chair and I think I've got another one with like picking up a bag of shopping um those those have been sort of a more recent development um mm -hmm. and I really enjoy that process of sort of trying to highlight um, difference and trying to highlight sort of and just make people think about the ways that they do things and trying to sort of yeah develop a sort of sense of understanding and sort of appreciation for other people's situations um yeah. and that that for me is quite quite yeah I, I enjoy that element of it and I enjoy this sort of reaction that that gets from people because um I, I've had a lot of sort of able-bodied people tell me that you know it's really made them consider the ways that they approach doing things and how I, I I don't want to say easy, but sort of how different it must be for other people, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's that's um, a nice sort of yeah, a nice sort of feeling to have is that yeah. actually this is stopping and making people sort of take note of the ways that other people might be struggling with this sort of very simple everyday task, you know. Yeah, totally. Okay, so the, the closing question, I suppose, is is you know, when I when I introduce concepts of taking self portraits, and some people kind of go, oh, terrifying idea, you know, I don't like myself. Have you got any words of of wisdom? You know, thinking about the words of wisdom that you got um, when when you were embarking on this, any sort of words of encouragement and wisdom for anybody who's thinking of using self portraiture techniques? Um, for me, and I've I've only begun to understand this in the last couple of years as well. Self-portraiture doesn't actually, it doesn't have to be an image of yourself. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be sort of, and here's me posed on a chaise long. Um, that that doesn't have to be self-portraiture. And I think going into it with that approach, I wish I'd had that approach at the start because um, it can be quite an uncomfortable situation, especially if you're not sort of fond of seeing yourself in front of the camera. But um, what I found useful when I was taking self-portraiture in the more, um, classical sense of sort of an image of myself was just find a sort of element that you feel comfortable photographing 
and like find a sort of bit of your body if that's what you want to use as your sort of subject matter find a piece of yourself that you actually are quite fond of yeah. and then potentially hone in on that element and then you can slowly sort of start to work your way outwards if that makes sense mm -hmm. and I think you know that was a really useful process for me when I started taking images was um, I sort of found elements that I was quite comfortable of initially and sort of not trying to push it too far and create images that potentially would set me back but trying to find a way to sort of progress through this sort of um yeah progress through the sort of medium of self-portraiture um and for me definitely sort of concentrating on an element that you really like um or that you feel uh comfortable taking an image of and then sort of working your way outwards um until eventually you'll sort of be taking you know um full self-portraits but mm -hmm. that that was really useful for me when i started off and also like you know it it doesn't have to be of you it can be of things that symbolize you or it can be you know a still life of collection of of um antiquities or stuff that represents you that that for me is still a self-portrait yeah. um and I, I think yeah that that would be my recommendation for sure it's trying just try you know change the way that you think of self portraiture with regards to doesn't have to be an image of myself and also if you want to go down taking images of yourself find an area that you're comfortable with and sort of try and work outwards excellent advice brilliant <laughs> i don't know what... <laughs> thanks so much for taking the, your time today to have a chat i think that's that's been very valuable um if people want to get in touch and, and see more of your work do you have a, a web link that i can put on the screen uh, i do i'll send it i'll send it through to you um yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Jack. Much appreciated. All the best, Neil.